Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter, and it's Friday the 21st of April, near through the fourth month of this year, nearly a third of the way through the year. Amazing. Time just seems to be flying for various reasons, but here in South Wales it's a bit grey and damp out, so I'm glad I'm stuck indoors and I will tell you more about that in a wee while. But first, I've got some stuff in front of me here. And I just want to say a big thank you for all of you who are sticking by me while I'm trying to get myself sorted, you know, sort of emotionally, mentally, physically and so and everything else. There's just way too much going on uh, in some ways, and not a lot in others, but that's a whole different tale. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for all the lovely comments, the likes, subscribes, the shares of my videos. I appreciate that all very much. And if you've tagged me in any of your artwork as well. I may not have got to it because I've, I'm on a bit of a social media hiatus at the moment. Um, I haven't got back properly into the swing of things since I damaged my um, muscles, ligaments, tendons, of my back and around my side between the ribs. And um, I've had other issues to deal with since then. Just hope it will soon sort itself out, trust me. <laughs> It's everything seems to be awkward and difficult to organize anyway. So in front of me, as I just said, you can see a variety of things. I've got pens and a pencil there. This is a piece of marker paper. This one happens to be the Winsor and Newton one, but I have many and I prefer the thinner specialist marker papers to the Ohuhu. Um, they have a much better coating on them that works much better with alcohol markers and my pens they don't seem to soak up as much ink from my pens either either alcohol pens or my pigment markers and that's a bonus in in many ways okay so what have i got here well this firstly I'll move the others out the way this is what i was drawing in my last video and i've now completed it um once i'd finished it and I used Karin markers with a water brush. And if you saw the last video, you know I found the best way of applying these to this paper is to wet the paper with the brush, gently add colour to that wet area and then use the water brush to spread the colour out to get a gradient. And although the gradients aren't identical in each section, I made a point of starting with the darkest closest to the flower and spreading the lightest out. So they sort of work. And I have got some shadowing here, but I'll tell you about that now. Um, I did the same kind of thing with the darkest orange red and yellow, um, orangey yellow, um, close to the centre of the flower and spread them out. And the centre I did in this checkerboard design afterwards. But the thing was, when I'd finished this with all the diva dance on the top, and even with the little white dots in Diva Dance, that's something I love to do. It makes it look like we've got perhaps little tears into an alternate reality and we can see the stars or atoms on the other side or little eyes peering at us from the dark. I don't know, whatever your imagination requires, but I like that. Um, but I, I thought that the, the colours were just too pale and or too lacking in saturation and there wasn't enough contrast between them for the flower and the leaves particularly to stand out. So I used some coloured pencils. I used a dark red on the orangey red section and an orange in the yellow orangey yellow section to darken the colour close to the flower. That's given it that feeling of the, the petals folding inwards towards the centre. So there's that feeling of volume that's there. And I also wanted to do, I also used a pale yellow green and a, to use a slightly lighter mossy green to lighten the colours of the green, but there's still a similarity that there still wasn't enough contrast between the leaves and the background. So I thought, aha, uh -huh, I know what I shall do. I shall dig out, I shall use a dark blue. I chose a Prussian blue pencil and I added that in places where I wanted shadow and then I used a blender pencil to smooth it out and to blend it out that little bit. And I kept going back and forth until I got the intensity I liked. I might like a little bit more in here, but it'll do. And that really helped to lift it off. And when I looked at it, uh, you know, the next day, I went, especially, you know, I went, oh, 
This looks like the flower has been thrown onto water and it's heavy enough to dent the water and set these swirls out. And it's almost, you know, it's in motion almost. You know, we've got a photograph of it in motion. Um, and without the water splashing anywhere or whatever. So that's how it feels. I say photograph, it's not a photographic art picture. It's very stylized, simplified, um, you know, almost too perfect in some ways, but um, it kind of works for me. So I will take a scan of this or a photograph of it and post it properly in the comments section so you can see that nice and clearly. But um, so, yeah, so I did finish it. OK, to other things. Um, it was probably since last weekend. I've been looking at and playing around with um, Re not Rebecca Blair's art, but her kind of style and the pattern she uses and the way she puts them together in order to understand how she does things. And it struck me that she gets a lot of inspiration from medieval manuscripts and things like that. And lo and behold, on her Instagram page, and I'll put the link to it down below, she says medieval. So I wanted to play with some of these things and the patterns she uses are fantastic. Some of them are quite similar to patterns you see in Zentangle or patterns you'll see all over the world. Um, but very simple and very simply done. And her colouring, the colour she adds is very flat without shading. She uses black and white to add those highlights in, which is fantastic. So this is my first attempt. Oh, don't ask. It is on um, marker paper, this Ohuhu marker paper, and I used Ohuhu markers for this. I like the yellowy green. I really like this greeny, bluey grey. The pink, well, something is a bit too garish too much here, and it may be the pink. Um, I find with alcohol markers, um, it's quite difficult to find soft, muted colours sometimes. Um, in, you know, and, and to have that range of colours. I've got the Ohuhu pastel set, but even they are too bright in tone. And I know you can mix and glaze colours. So, you know, I could put an underpainting of a warm grey with pink on the top and it would tone the pink down. But I'm not comfortable with doing that yet and I'd much prefer to have a single marker that will have the colour I like in it. So I've got experimenting to do, but you can see there's some Zentangle patterns have crept in. You know, there's Shattuck there and there's this one, which is one of the fragments. Can't remember which fragment it is, um, but it's, you can find a list of fragments in the primer, the Zentangle primer, which is also pronounced primer in America. Here we say primer. Um, and you know, there's oh, there's some, that a variation on Knightsbridge. It's very curved looking, and um, but some other patterns I've sort of like borrowed from Rebecca Blair, and made them my own as well. They're not patterns I haven't used in the past anyway. Um, I can remember using shapes and forms like this when I was really starting to get into art, and I was looking at texture and pattern. So from this one, I went to this one and I prefer the colours on this one in fact it's been a couple of days since I last looked at this and I'm going okay then looking at the screen actually they're okay I love these um, dusty browns as it were golden browns almost the earthy colours and I particularly like them because I have some I don't know if we can catch it you see the gold and I put gold in between these that was a mistake um, but I really like that um, this green I like against it. I'm not so fussed on this blue though and that I think was my mistake. I should have stuck with this lovely greeny colour. I have used it elsewhere. I've used it there and there but um, I think I'd prefer to use this colour right the way across. But it's all me learning and sticking to two colours that actually work well together might be my plan in the future going forward with things like this certainly. And here you can see it's a variation on Tripoli. Well, I've got two variations on Tripoli. That's a bit like Crescent Moon, but a bit different. These remind me of Zentangly type patterns. There's some diva dancers crept in there. I've used cross hatching or more diva dance. And then other things, 
that I've used as well and this one this is a favorite of mine I've used it for a long time at time you know from that depends what I'm doing but I do enjoy that as a texture this section does need something more and I might take um, a white gel pen to that because I think that would work wonderfully and then I graduated to this <laughs> um, I love these leaves they remind me so much of medieval manuscripts and I saw them in Rebecca Blair's art and I had to borrow them as it were and use them in my own way uh, but they definitely really do remind me of illuminated manuscripts the medieval and anglo-saxon well, medieval times more than anglo-saxon but um this is something i've done as long as i can remember um in art with variations on patterns and themes here and you can see those little leaves have crept in here they remind me of um patterns you see in um gothic stained glass windows or you know windows in in churches and abbeys and so on um but you get that and sometimes you get it carved into stone as well so I can I can tell where the influences come from there so I've got you know some Zentangle patterns with diva dance I guess you could class this one in there as tipple um, I'm not sure if that's one I quite like this one with the alternating long and short stems with the blobs on the top straight lines instead of wavy and this it looks almost like staples or nails going across but that's there's a story there's kind of story there and this one must be, it's got the feeling of being a zentangle style pattern but i did it on an asymmetric grid a wibbly wobbly grid the outside i haven't decided what i'm going to do with yet whether i'm going to add color so until i work that out it will remain as it is and the colors i used here were um green grays and i love green grays so why i didn't pick those for some of these i don't know so I then thought I'd have a look at doing things in layers because I like the way that you can build layers up so they look like rock strata, layers of rock, and perhaps with fossils in and textures and minerals and things like that with here flowers and plants growing on the top. Um, I really don't like that pink. I love the green. I don't like the pink. It's, it's all right here and I, I liked the muted yellow here so part of me wishes I'd use that yellow and the green and kept to those um, but I've used white to pick out shapes as well as black to add shadow I really like the density of black here and apart from that pink I'm quite happy with that actually that one stemmed from this one and if I put them side by side oh no this one grew from that one because I wanted to re redraw it and I used a bigger piece of paper and I haven't finished it because confession time this week I have tried to make three videos and I have failed in each one so this is my fourth attempt at what I'm going to do today ish and um, I just wanted to share with you some of the work I've been doing this isn't all but it's just some of my some of the work and um, oh I love this variation on the these remind me of hydrangea flowers individual flowers from hydrangeas I was watching a video where somebody was using dried hydrangeas to do some fowl for um, eco-dyeing using distress inks, distress oxides. And I just noticed these lovely star shapes or sometimes they have four points on the stars inside them and the way the... So uh, you've got a stylized form and I like this one. But you can see there's sort of like almost gothic um, windows here again and different textures I don't like this one I'm going to color those all in black this is interesting by putting the shapes in as well and then I finished this yesterday will it all fit on the screen not quite and again I've used those hydrangeas and I've put oh I've missed the white dots out there oh dear <laughs> it's okay I can I can fix that one later um, I need to do something with these leaves because they, they feel a bit lost in some way. But I've used peachy pinks, I suppose, here. I've used a sandstone and a moss colour and um, white and black pens. Oh, and here I used um, a very pale yellow and a slightly darker yellow just to fill the, the ledges in or the, you know, the breaks in the layers. 
and I'm quite happy with this I really like this and I didn't use this color this background color isn't used anywhere else but I'm glad I used it because these they these didn't look right sitting just on white this looks great sitting on the white paper um, I have added color in between here I think I actually I used a warm gray there um, and then this then you've got the illusion that there might be a line drawn there because you might your eye will go oh there's a line there there isn't but we sort of join the separate bits up as if there is and so I like this one and it's on this thinner paper the the, pro the marker paper I like so it's kind of bookmark size and if I wanted to use it as a bookmark I think I'd back it with some um, heavier weight card or and or possibly laminate it and that the lamination will keep it nice and neat and clean which would please me greatly and I may do that you never know once I once I'm sure I'm happy with it so I thought I'd take a piece of paper today and draw some of these patterns with you I don't think I'm going to get it finished today because we've had a lot of burbling going on but I am going to bring my artwork over to one side so I've got reference my um the book I'm I'm collecting or reorganizing patterns and motifs and textures and um, other things in I've been working on this week as well and I've done quite a bit of work in there and I've done a lot of exploration of fragments yesterday I got I got my head stuck in that um, fragments are the basic units of a repeating pattern um, in you know in, in sort of like um, in other terms you could call them um, tesserae as in the individual tessera of a tessellated pattern um, like Roman mosaics or you, they're called cells or tiles and they can be repeated ad infinitum to create a pattern um, as people do in Zentangle. But what I want to do here is I really do want to draw some of these um, hydrangeas I want to share with you and um, perhaps some of the other patterns. So I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start here and what I'm going to do for my hydrangea flower I'm going to just start by drawing a circle. I'm just going to adjust my position so that hopefully if I put my hand over here, you'll be able to see what I'm drawing. There we go. And then I'm going to put another circle in there. Now I've got a little blip in my line here and I don't mind that. Um, there's a reason for this. Now around this, I want to put in five leaf shapes or seed shapes roughly equidistant so we create something that's a bit like a star like that and perhaps if I zoom in we'll see it a bit better okay now then I'm going to draw the main part of the petal and to do that I'm going to follow around this I'm going to go out this way and then I'm going to swirl around and create this almost spoon shape. I'll do it again. Now for this one it's going to be a bit different because this is going to go underneath there so I'm just going to add a bit of ink at the top and it's going to go around it's going to go around here around behind and then back and down and they're not going to be identical because I can't draw these things identical. And I also found when I was drawing these that I'm showing you that these sort of like tuck behind, but I actually found it a lot easier to draw it going in this direction to get the shape. And then we don't have to worry about tucking things in behind. Same here, I'm just going to add a little hint of black at the top of these just to fill a little bit of space in. This one I think is going to need a bit more space back filled in. But let's go here and I'm going to go around back like that and then for the last one and I'm just going to go there I'm just going to add the outer curve and so I've got a flower here but what I what I discovered is that if I draw inside here and draw a smaller version of that shape 
I get a really interesting kind of pattern in this petal. It's to create a repeating pattern, you have to repeat what you draw or create. And sometimes if you make a, a what seems to be a mistake, especially if you're drawing directly in pen, then if you just move my pencils and pens and stuff off there, if you repeat that across the whole of your design or that particular pattern, it looks deliberate and it can also lead to a completely new pattern. It really can. Now I'm only going to do this one flower here and I want to put in this corner and I'm going to use the corner of this to put a lovely big leaf shape like this. And I'm going to put a vein in in this way as well. Oh, the pen I'm using is a Uni Emart and they're called Everfine pens because the tip of the pen is protected by a plastic sheath and it's almost impossible to wreck them apparently. I'm sure you could if you wanted to deliberately, but I find even with my heavy handed um, <laughs> nature, I actually find it incredibly difficult to um, do anything with these. So I've done one over here, so I'm going to do another leaf on this side. And like with most fine liner pens, if you use less pressure on the nib, you get a finer line, which is what I've got in the middle there. It's, it's noticeably thinner, but it's not totally thin. It works for me anyway. And part of me is thinking I need to put a fourth one in, but I'm not. I'm resisting that. Let me zoom out. I am resisting that urge because I want to do something over in this section, I think. And I could, I could actually put, um, actually that might be an idea. I might actually put um, a row of them going this way. So if I, if I do one here, about, about the same distance, this way, the center there with that in and I'll draw this one a lot quicker this time hopefully like this and then I can start by drawing these lovely looping shapes in that will create the petals and will overlap with the first one. Because this is how I do things mostly. There we go. And then um, this one as well. That little bit on the top. And then for the last one here, we're just going to Add this here and that little bit of ink there. And again, I'm just going to create this kind of shape inside them. And the fact that the petals aren't identical doesn't phase me at all. This is hang drawn, and it, when you look at flowers closely, you'll notice that their petals aren't identical. It would be if you were, you know, very carefully drafting this and drawing it, you know, in a stylized way. But what I focus on is making flowers that are similar, that you know that it's the same thing and it's going to be part of this particular design. But the fact that they're slightly different each time is fine with me. And if you look at the work of people like William Morris from the Arts and Crafts Movement and others, their drafts and so on, even not their drafts, but finished patterns for fabric and other designs. The, the flowers they draw there, even though they're the same flower, they're not identical. You know, although you could copy and paste in terms of tracing and transferring by 
you're using either tracing paper, uh, you know, use tracing paper and then pencil on the back. If they had tracing paper, I'm not, you know, I'm talking about that, I'm not entirely sure. And, um, do you know, I am going to do them in each corner. I've changed my mind completely here. You see how this would naturally lend itself to having another one of these on each corner. And hopefully with enough space for um, petals and leaves. So if they are a bit smaller as well, I'm not going to complain about that at all. They will be what they will be and that will make me very happy. So it's been a funny old week for me. Last Sunday evening, I was around people. I had to go and do a kind of talk somewhere of which I will say no more because that's a part of my life that I don't share publicly per se. And I had a message the next day to tell me that one of the people there has tested positive for COVID and then somebody else yesterday I was told had and a couple of others and you're there going great. So I was with them for a number of hours and um, so I woke up Monday. No, I didn't wake up Monday. I think I was okay ish. But certainly by Tuesday, I developed a horrible sore throat and um, snotty and runny nose. Now the snotty runny nose and um, itchy skin and things could just be al my allergies. It's been high tree pollen um, recently here and I, it's the only pollen that affects me and my asthma. But I did a COVID test once I found out on Tuesday and it was negative. Um, but obviously I had to look at my tonsils to swab around them and my tonsils had white spots on them. So I've had a mild case of tonsillitis as well. But whenever I'm ill, whenever I catch a cold or flu, my tonsils are the first things that cop it. They're a weak spot, like my digestive system with me. And yeah, so I don't know. I tested yesterday and I was still negative. Um, but how long that will remain, I do not know because it can take anywhere up to 14 days for you to test positive. So I've kept myself to myself. I've stayed at home since then. because um, I really don't want to pass such a horrible illness on to other people. And, you know, please, I'm not, I don't want to debate about this. Um, I'm a scientist. I follow scientific facts and evidence and you know which does change as we know more about things so, you know the science will change and I say the science and science isn't something you believe in it's the facts and figures lead to conclusions but as facts and figures and results of experiments and observations change then sometimes we have to change um, how we explain things or the theories we have about how life, the universe and everything works. You know, last year, um, the James Webb Space Telescope was launched and its very first pictures blew a hole in the theories of modern cosmo cosmology, and it, it all having to scrabble around, say what we thought was the case isn't. <laughs> and so there's exciting new science coming out from that. And it doesn't mean that we were wrong or that science, you know, because I am still a scientist. I always will have an interest in science. It doesn't mean that we were wrong, 
we were correct with the information, knowledge and understanding we had at the time. Those theories um, have been suggested and worked upon. Strictly speaking, they're hypotheses. A theory is something that is kind of, you know, set in stone like um, Newton's laws of motion. They work and they haven't stopped working in the centuries since he formulated them. And they're the reason we got man to the moon. And again, I'm not going to have a debate about conspiracy theories. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, and we still use them to this day to launch satellites into orbit and, um, you know, sort of like the James Webb satellite into orbit around the Earth to take amazing images and information of our universe to help us in understanding more about um, where we live, where we exist. And um, so, yeah, so that's been interesting. So my throat's still not right today. It does feel better, but it might just be that I'm used to it. My ears were, have been crackling for a couple of days, so I know that it's um, an ear, nose, throat kind of issue, and that's the runny nose as well, I expect. Um, so I'm going to be cautious. And then yesterday, my washing machine broke down with a load of washing in it and water, so I couldn't open the door. So I've got somebody coming tomorrow to have a look. And, you know, my, my washing machine is over 30 years old, must prob you know, it's got to be. And um, maybe even a bit longer than that. So it's done really good, but there is only me here and I only do a couple of loads a week because, you know, that that's, I don't change my clothes every single day. I don't wear them once and wash them. Um, so if it can fix it, brilliant. If it can't, because that's more environmentally friendly. If it can't, then I know I'm going to have to get a new one and I will find one that is economically, you know, ec ecologically friendly and, you know, environmentally friendly. Right, so I have now got a border around the outside here of these lovely hydrangea flowers. I could just fill the centre with some leaves, but I really like the kind of shape I've got in the centre here. But I want to fill it with something else. And I think I'm going to do what Zentangle always suggests. I'm going to aura around this. It's not just Zentangle suggesting, this is something I have always liked to do, to separate different elements of a design out one from another. I think that's why Rebecca Blair's work appeals so much to me, not just the, the obvious medieval and architectural and natural influences. Ooh, that was a bad wobbly line. It's fine, it'll do fine. Um, but it's the fact that she tends to do that kind of thing as well and or creates breaks between patterns in different ways. And there are lots of people doing very similar things now. So I'm not, not in the realms of, you know, becoming a Rebecca Blair clone, but in incorporating those kind of ideas and some of the t patterns and textures into my work. Um, you know, making it all my own with a nod to her because that's the right thing to do is always to credit somebody with what you've got. I mean, I don't know if anybody else has ever drawn hydrangea flowers like this. They may very well have. I haven't done any research. So if you know who has, well, that's great. But the chances are many people have done flowers like this because I, it strikes me as it feels familiar. So I don't know. So just by putting this shape in there, you can see it's fairly symmetrical. I'm, I'm quite impressed with that, to be honest. Um, I want to fill this with a pattern. And I'm so tempted to fill it with this wibbly wobbly flower pattern here. And I think I might. Um, is that too much flowers? Possibly. Though, I might actually, rather than me doing a pattern that might be familiar or not, Perhaps I will, just tidying this up, take some influence from some of my other patterns here. I do like this. I 
it's so hard for me to decide. It really, really is. I'm here humming and hawing because part of me would love to put this kind of pattern in. Part of me wants to do something like this or the wibbly wobbly version in here. And, part, and I think that actually might work nicely, but I do want the more wibbly wobbly one. So I am going to draw some curved lines, which the distance between them will vary because that's the nature of them. And do this so. So it's been a bit of a, another week and I'm getting a bit fed up of getting ill all the time. I do have to say this, I don't know why. And it's frustrating when I don't spend a lot of time with people in general, but every time I go out, that's most probably why I'm getting ill. So every time I do, I, ca I pick something up that's doing the rounds. So I'm still waiting. So I'm hoping that tomorrow morning I'll do a, a test, COVID test, so that the chap can come and have a look at my washing machine and hopefully at least get the clothes out of it because my favourite fleecy top is in there, or one of them. And although I know I can buy new ones, that's a bit of an expense I don't want to have. OK, so what I've done here is I've just drawn a grid in. And if I thought about it, I could have done that diagonally, but it'll be fine. And what I'm going to do along each line, I'm going to actually this will work nicely. I've just realised because I'm drawing these rice shapes again. So we've, we're taking an element of one design and using it to create another pattern. And that can create a coherence in your design as well. But we're using it in a different way. And the pattern will be different. It isn't like me to do something as relatively simple as this, is it? But I actually enjoy that. I'm actually enjoying doing this. I think pattern and shading and everything else thing will really help to bring this to life. And I'm going to put a lot of black in this pattern, partly to bring the pattern out, but also to give that contrast between the light, flat light flowers light coloured flowers because they are going to be light coloured and the space here. I'm also with the tonsillitis and everything it's made me very tired. I've suffered with tonsillitis on and off all through my life and I've got the most horrendous tonsils that have got all of these holes in them or crypts they call them and so food gets stuck in there from time to time and you get these hard, very smelly lumps appear called tonsil stones, which is quite disgusting. And um, I did see an ENT special, or, you know, specialist um, quite a few years ago, many years ago. So I think I'd had four bouts of tonsillitis in one year and I was ill for at least two to three weeks each time off work that long and the doctor said you know this is this is a bit much now Angela <laughs> um, I'll refer you to ENT and see what they can do and he took one look at my tonsils and said yeah we can take those out I can do that for you as soon as possible actually because they are you know I opened my mouth and he didn't even have to press my tongue down to see them they're that visible because they they just permanently enlarged and um, he said you know gave me all the, you know, the positive sides to it is that I wouldn't have any problems with tonsillitis or infections or these horrible tonsil stones anymore. But he also gave me the um, the dangers of having it done as an adult. Um, with children, it's no, not as serious an operation, though things can go wrong. But with adults, it can go drastically wrong from blood, le blood loss and death to, um, you know, um, a, a long time healing and continuing problems with where the tonsils were removed. And I said, well, I'm not really sure. So I've never, 
I've had an anaesthetic once to reset a broken arm when I was nine years old. And, um, but I wasn't too sure about that. And I said to him, I said, well, rather than me making the decision now, um, I'm wondering whether these holes, these crypts in my tonsils are harboring um, bacteria and the, when I have antibiotics, they don't nail it on the head. And he said, that's a very good point because you've had antibiotics quite often for tonsillitis. I said, yeah, I have. And he said, okay, then what I'll do is I'll write to your doctor so that when you next have tonsillitis, they'll give you um, a mixture of antibiotics, which I'd actually suggested as well about, you know, using a mixture of them to see if it can nail the infection, the underlying infection on the head. Well, I didn't have tonsillitis again. I haven't had tonsillitis since then until this week. So I think we scared it, you know, it's behaving itself, you know. OK, so I've got my grid done here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just and I will zoom in for this so you can see. I'm going to aura inside each one of these sections. So the infection isn't bad enough that I need antibiotics. I think it's clearing up on its own. Possibly. I haven't had a look today. I certainly my throat feels better, so you know. So I'm just have the waiting game now to see if this is just the first development in COVID. Which I really, really could do without, you know. I think we all could, to be honest. I'm going to fill that little bit in there with black. That can be filled with black as well. And that. There's a reason because I'm going to come back and fill these inner sections with black because I really do want a fair amount of black of darkness in here. I want it to feel like it is in the distance. And the way you do that is by increasing the contrast, increasing the saturation and dulling colours down, surprisingly. Actually, that would be the shape there. There we go. OK, so this one's going to be interesting. Because we'd have part of the one there. And the same here, really. Sort of have to guess where you've got bits that are overlapping you know, where this, this outer line here, the uh, the border, of this section appears, you sort of have to work out how to complete it, where they disappear under or whether you need to add an extra bit of a pattern there. So I did that at the top. So that's what it looks like now. So this is where I get busy with a pen. Now I could spend ages filling these in with this pen. Or I've got a Tombow Fudenosuke, which has got a brush tip on it, which I can get quite thick lines with, and as well as thin ones for pressure. And I just find it a lot easier to fill in spaces. And I can adjust the shape of these as I go, where I've got perhaps too big a difference in the gaps between this inner section and the little rice shapes. go like this. I just like this very much. <laughs> when you put black down it's a perfect background to add little patterns in another colour to be honest. Especially sparkly, metallic. White works well as well. Oh, and I've got some new white pens. Because me and jelly rolls aren't on the best of terms often. But um, I was spelunking through Cult Pens, which is a online stationery store here in the UK. I get a lot of my pens from them. And I found that uni 
um, Uniball and Pentel, I've got white pigment gel pens. So I had to get some to try them out. And so far, so good. That's what I'm going to say. You can see already the effect this has on increasing that colour. In fact, part of me wishes I coloured the whole of this bit in, not just putting this little section inside there. Um, if I change my mind, I'll go back and add them. In fact, I may have to because I, I haven't messed up that very fine gap that was there. And I also treated myself to a set of um, Winsor & Newton Pro markers as well. They've got a lot of colours in there that I really like. Some that are a bit bright and garish, but will find their use in anything I do that's medieval manuscript inspired because of the jewel bright colours they tended to use. But um, or when I need contrast. But they are brilliant at layering them and glazing as well. And I find you can layer with the Ohuhus, but they don't seem, they just don't seem to work as well. So let me have a look. I'll have a good look at this with you now and I'll make my mind up whether I'm just going to fill in all of those sections. Let me have a look. Let me zoom out. No, I think I'm going to leave it. It'll be fine. Now I have got these edges as well. So let me go back to my Emot pen. And this one, just to fill it, just to draw along the pencil lines and to fill these gaps in. And I do want to add some pattern or texture to my leaves as well because that's going to be important here. I'm trying to think what I'm going to do for dinner, um, you know, sort of like lunch on lunch and tea all combined here and dinner today. So I didn't get up until well after 11 o'clock and I went to bed. I did go to bed about midnight, but I couldn't believe I sl mostly slept through till then. Oh, there's one bit there I didn't do and here. And with these sections, I do think I want to fill these in black as well. I really do want to fill those in black as they will give um, that a nice dark edge as well and will carry on that feeling of the blackness, the darkness beneath the flowers here. That wasn't a brilliant line there, Angel, neither is that. So come on, girl. Let's see if we can tidy this all up, is it? I can see me ending up filling the whole of this border around here in with black, the way I'm going. I'm having a good day with it today. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, it'll work its way out, they always do. Having a broader nib to just fill areas in is very helpful. Honestly, it is. You know, brush pen is good. Like this, or just, you know, like the, the thicker microns you can get, like a graphic one, or the brush pen. The 10, I think they have a 10. I'm not sure if they've got bigger ones now than a 10. Can't remember. But it makes quick work of filling spaces in with black for sure. But you can get the Tombow for Denisukis in different colours, um, but they're very bright and the brown is very much an earthy brown. It's not, I don't find it a pleasant brown to be honest. Oh gosh, look at that, I messed up there. So I bought a set of them when I was 
um, digging into a lettering course on Domestica. I've got them still rattling around here somewhere because they won't go off. It's not like food. They may dry up over years, but the lids on these are pretty tight fitting, I do have to say. And um, yeah, I quite, uh, yes, I do like this black outside. Oaks. Oh shoot, I've just smudged it. Look, idiot. Okay, it is what it is and that may mean this may be attacked on the outside with a black alcohol marker just to fill the whole of the edge up. But then that gives me the opportunity to add patterns on top of it. Yeah, I quite like that idea. I do. I'm just going to fill these in first. In fact, if I thought about it, I could have used a black alcohol marker to colour these in, but which would have been far more sensible, let me tell you. Trying to make it so I don't have white gaps here. But inevitably, I'm going to notice some because when they dry, you notice things that you don't when the ink is still wet necessarily. So it's been a bit of an odd week. I had to cancel and meet going to a meeting on Tuesday with the Heritage Railway I'm a member of because I had a bad throat and I didn't know if I had COVID. Still don't, for sure. Yeah. Today's day five after exposure, so it can take, you know, they recommend testing on day seven for the maximum use, but you know. There, so that has worked. I quite like this. Do you know that? That's quite nice. Diagonally as well as a, a thingy. Okay, I'm gutted about that. That has annoyed me now. Really annoyed me. Right. I am going to, I was going to, I don't have the white gel pens to hand, they're in my pencil case that's downstairs. But I, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to add any colour, I'm going to say this is done for now. So, oh I was going to add patterns to the leaves but I really, really am struggling with my mind here. So, not my mood or emotion, they're fine, just focusing, it's fog head. Um, head fog, fog head. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. Yeah, it's that bad now. <laughs> so, I'm going to call an end to this, but if you would like to see it completed, film, have me film it and complete it on film so you can see what I do, and I will do this with alcohol markers, Leave a comment below. I will find a way that, that I'm, I'll should be able to disguise with white gel pens. I would think. Failing that, it'll be a black marker or very dark coloured marker around the edge. So thank you for joining me. Take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you all again soon. Until then, oh, and be creative. Bye for now. Bye, hoyle.